You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. What's going on, NASCAR Diecast Collectors and Diecast Reviews on YouTube? This is Original Bry here, and welcome back to another new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, hosted by me, Brian LaFleur Jr. As always, guys, I'm bringing you all your bi-weekly NASCAR Diecast News throughout each and every other week until the very end of the 2017 NASCAR Diecast season. And boy, oh boy, guys, we got ourselves another cool episode to talk about. Not as lengthy as last episode, but still got a quite a few news to talk about that you might have missed in these last two weeks for the NASCAR Diecast news and everything else. But of course, we do got some newly released diecasts from our good friends at Plan B Sales, K-State Diecast, Unless There's Diecast, and any of your local diecast dealers supplied by Lionel Racing, the true gods himself. And we also do got some brand new pre-orders as well that we'll be covering all the race weekends that you might have missed in these last two to three weeks. And of course, we got to get things off with the cancellations as well. We got five new cancellations to show you guys, and uh, maybe there'll be some cup cars, maybe some Xfinity cars, we never know. But we also do got some uh, some news regarding of uh, Cars 3 merchandise for NASCAR. We're going to see what's going to be up to with that very shortly. But we're going to get all to, to this latest information and more as the NASCAR Diecast News starts right now. But before we do that, guys, we're going to take a look back at the last episode of the NASCAR Diecast News with its best-selling diecast and its least-selling diecast from NASCAR Diecast News 175. Alright everybody, welcome to NASCAR Diecast News, I'm your host of Original Big Bry, and we're going to start things off with your newly released diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales, k Diecast, and Alessia's Diecast, or any of your local diecast dealers that supply Lionel Racing Diecast, which they are the company that makes the NASCAR Diecast that we all know and love for this episode of the NASCAR Diecast News and anything NASCAR Diecast. But um, yep, we do got some brand new 164s, no new 124s for this episode guys. Um, since I don't really cover color chrome cars, those are the only new ones that came out. So we do got some three new 164s to show you guys. And one of them is from 2016. And we're going to start things off with the Daniel Suarez Aris uh, Xfinity Series Championship 164. This car was originally available in Wave 3 of the 2017 at NASCAR Authentics retail line, uh, which is now available, I believe, at all your Walmarts and Targets. I did saw that at my local Walmart and Target the other day. Um, didn't pick this car up because, you know, you know, guys, how I feel about the championship cars. I don't have to say it ever again, but since Lionel keeps bringing these cars up, yeah, championship logo. Not a big fan of it on top of the car. Um, but it is cool that this is the first diecast that we're getting that has the uh, Chase Red for the, because um, you guys know the Xfinity Chase made its debut last year. So this is the first diecast that we are having with the, um, red with the red chase banners and the uh red splitter and red spoiler so that's a pretty cool touch right there uh looks pretty well with the Aris paint scheme but uh if you're a dan schwartz suarez fan i would recommend getting this but if you're not or if you're not a big fan of championship diecast then i wouldn't recommend getting this plus you're better off picking up the car from wave three because you get a free uh card that comes with it 
or if you get the regular Harris car, that's also in Wave 3 as well, uh, they get a nice hood. So, um, yeah, this car, you know, nothing too crazy. But we do got two new cars to show you guys that are from 2017. And the first one up is, is it is probably the first Xfinity car that we've had, I think, for 2017. It's been a while since we've had some new Xfinity cars being produced for 2017 because they always get canceled. But this one did not get canceled, and it is the guy who almost won last weekend, guys, William Byron, man, this guy was almost uh, sh up short of winning. Um, if you guys saw that race with him and uh, Danny Hamlin at Michigan for the Xfinity Series, it was so close seeing William Byron get this win. And I mean, so close to, he was so, so close to getting that win, but um, just came up a little short. Um, but he was definitely driving the wheels off this car. But uh, his Liberty University Chevrolet Camaro is now available. I know a lot of people are looking forward for this car. Um, it's only available in the 164 right now, but the 124 should be available in, I um, believe, about uh, in the next couple months. I believe uh, ETA is around August, I believe, for the uh, 124. But it could be sooner, so we may never know. But a uh, really nice looking car right there, especially if you're a Byron fan. And the last diecast up for this episode it is the... It is the granddaddy of them all, the Chase Elliott Hooters Chevrolet. That car is now available in the 164 scale only so far. So really nice that this car does not have a base on it. I mean, if you guys remember the Hooters car from last year, that car was only available in the 124 scale for the Greg Biffle Darn to throwback. So really cool that Hooters decided to step up and make a 164 diecast. Um, even though it is not going to have the Monster Energy logos on this car whatsoever. Um, but it's still a really nice looking car. You know, I, I, this car looked all right in the renders but looks pretty nice in the die cast i just wish there was a bigger uh, a, a really richer orange outline on the 24 where the side is to make it to make the 24 really pop but it's still a decent looking car I, i'm hoping next year they could change it up but uh really cool seeing hooters be back uh, full time in the uh, monster energy nascar cup series i know that's a great sponsor to have and uh if you're a chase la fan i would highly recommend getting this car because he did drill this car at talladega and this car is very reckon is very recognizable that talladega race when that when he had that little uh, big crash with uh, AJ Allmendinger. So, uh, might be the most memorable car to have for Chase Elliott, but still a really nice looking car to have indeed. And now we're going to go on to the pre orders, guys. And we got ourselves a lot of cool looking pre orders to be talking about on this episode, guys. Uh, we do got about, uh, I believe, uh, seven to eight pre orders, if I cannot count right, but we'll just see how that goes. So, uh, get the count timer ready but uh, we're gonna go things off with some of your new race wind die casts that are now going to be produced and uh, the first one up it is going to be Jimmy Johnson's number 48 Lowe's Dover race wind car this car you know is nothing too crazy about it but uh, really cool to see Jimmy Johnson get another win at Dover um, man I mean this guy is really good at this track Dover at Dover and it was really nice to see him get his uh, 11th win at Dover just amazing seeing that uh, he's crunching numbers at that racetrack so really nice right there um, we'll just see if it'll make the pre-order list but uh, this car will not have the Monster Energy logos of course since it'll be on the Hendrick diecast so uh, we'll see if this car will make it into the pre-order list and the next one up is gonna be really interesting we got another first time winner guys we first had Ricky Stiles Jr. Uh, getting his first win at Talladega and then we had Austin Dillon winning the Coca-Cola 600 and now ladies and gentlemen welcome to Victory Lane Ryan Blaney and the Ford Motocraft Ford Fusion. That car is finally back in victory lane. Uh, it's been since since the Daytona 500 in 2011 by Trevor Bain. So it has been a long drought for the Wood Brothers Racing Team to go back into victory lane. It was only a matter of time to see Ryan Blaney clinch his first win for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. This diecast is something you are not going to want to miss because it is going to be available for it is available for pre-order in both scales. So. If you're a diecast collector like me, I would highly recommend pre-ordering this car. Um, I'm probably definitely going to recommend getting the 164 at least because um, I'm a sucker for the race win 164. So this is going to be a really nice looking car to have. And Ryan Blaney is such a class act that um, he has he has he, he definitely has one of the uh, in, I definitely enjoyed his uh, celebration lab instead of burning his motor because. Wood Brothers Racing is a lower funded team so very classy for a young man like Ryan Plain to pull that off especially for his first win which I know <laughs> someone would blow off the tires on their first win like you know Stenhouse or Dylan or Kyle Larson from last year so really nice seeing him being in victory lane that's going to be awesome right there we do got another race version as well coming out guys but it's not a race win it is actually uh, another Pocono car and it is uh, Darrell Walls Jr's slash Darrell Walls Jr's or also known as Bubba Wallace in his uh, 
in his uh, debut uh, cup car for uh, the number 43 Smithfield car. So if you guys know, Bubba Wallace made his, uh, like I said, his first start at Pocono Raceway. And he did push himself a little too hard and he got a little, uh, exa he got he did pass out from exhaustion and maybe from a heat stroke or something like that. But uh, he definitely pulled himself a little too hard. But this is gonna be real, but besides, besides those consequences, we're gonna be getting Lionel decided to make a die cast. And they're going to make me going to be making the diecast of this car, which is really nice for both scales. So it's going to be another race version car. Um, you know, it's going to be very similar to Eric Amarillo's scheme. Uh, of course, it is going to have you know Bubba Wallace. On, it's not going to have Bubba Wallace on the name because he is a replacement driver. But it is going to be a nice uh, race version at the least. Especially if you're a big Bubba fan, I know his diecasts haven't been you know selling too well on the pre-order list. So this is definitely something I would highly recommend pre-ordering. If you guys want this car to be produced, you just gotta pre-order. Hate to be like Flamey Sales or Steve Post pressuring you guys to pre-order, but that's the only way this car will be made. So uh, definitely pre-order the crap load out of these cars, especially those race version with 64s. I love those things. Um, speaking of more guys, we do got some Dawn to throwbacks in this um, in this uh, pre-order wave. Um, we do got an update on Casey Kane's Great Clips Dawn to Throwback car. If you guys remember, that was scheduled on pre-order for a couple episodes ago. Um, but we actually, they, they finally finally released the, the the render of what this paint scheme is going to be. And um, Great Clips is going to step on board this year for um, the Dawn to Throwback. So that's a different sponsor. As you guys know, he had Farmers Insurance and... Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Liftmaster from last year with the Terry Labonte scheme, but now he's going to be representing a very recognizable uh, Hendrick Motorsports car, uh, the uh, Jeff Bodine's 1985 Levi Garrett car, and this is something any kind of classic NASCAR fan will recognize, especially in the mid in the mid 80s. So um, if you're a, if you're a person who grew up around that time watching the, watching this car go around the track. Um, what more can I say? This car definitely will have to be on your pre-order list and definitely would be on your die-cast shelf. It is going to be on the Gold Series, though, which that means the hood is only going to be open, but that's going to be for most Casey Kane cars, which is very unfortunate. Um, and you can, if you guys do want to find uh, this die-cast, um, Lionel Racing actually posted on uh, the latest episode of The Fix, which um, actually uploaded today by the time I'm making this video, which is Wednesday, the 21st of June. Um, they made a uh, diecast prototype video about some sneak peeks about those cars, and uh, this car was one of them. So you guys can check that out if you want to, or look at our social media, Facebook and Instagram, if you guys want to look at that information and look at those uh, exclusive photos from Lionel Racing. We all have that covered on social media, so make sure to give us a follow. Uh, that'd be really appreciated. And subscribe if you guys haven't already. But we also do got another Dawn to Throwback car, and it is a number another number five car, but it's for a different series. Um, I like the Cup Series guys. We got an Xfinity Series Dawn to Throwback car that's going to be produced. And uh, like I said, Lionel Racing also had this car available as well in their uh, the fix video. So go ahead and check that out. I'll probably put the link in the description. But it's Michael Nett's number five uh, TMC Transportation Dawn to Throwback, and it's going to be a tribute to a National Sprint Cup. A national sprint car driver, uh, Brad Doty, uh, or Doty, uh, I believe it's Brad Doty. If I'm horrible with pronunciation, but I'm hoping that's the correct way. Uh, but Brad Doty, if you guys aren't familiar with who he is, he is a National Sprint Car Hall of Famer and a World of Outlaws driver owned by uh, Michael Annette's father, Harold Annette. And, um, you know, there's something really interesting. This is going to be a great tribute because um, if you guys are familiar with Brad Do Doty, uh, he was paralyzed from the chest down in a collision at a USAC race in 1988. So uh, very unfortunate to see that happening. But it's really cool that Michael Nett's going to be, you know, representing this, um, especially one of his father's, uh, uh, that, you know, his father owns a team in uh, the World of Outlaws um, in a USAC or, you know, the sprint car, the sprint car series. That's what I'll call it. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with that, but I'm sure any sprint car series fans out there will know what I'm talking about. But if you're a sprint car series or world outlaws fan, I would recommend getting this car. Um, really great tribute to Brad Doty and, uh, we'll see how this car runs and see if it make it on the pre-order list. Um, a couple more pre-orders to talk about guys. We also got, uh, some brand new die casts that we've never seen before. We got, we're getting a Matt Tiff car. Um, if you guys are a Math Tip fan, guys, um, you're in luck because his National Brain Tumor Society car, um, that is going to be 
on the pre-order list. I was going to say produced, but we don't know yet. So, uh, hopefully I nailed Jinx's uh, car. But a really nice scene, Matt Tift uh, getting a car produced, especially for, uh, you know, the for, especially for this car. I believe he ran this car at Charlotte, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, that's going to be a really cool to car to have if you guys just get that car on pre-order list. So, and uh, these next two are very big surprises, and I'm going to save them for last. So, uh, the co uh, we do got some uh, Cody Ware diecast. So, yeah, that's an unfamiliar name that you guys might not heard of. Maybe you have if you are a big fan of the underfunding cars in the Cup Series. But Cody Ware is going to be having two diecasts that will be produced um, if you guys pre-order these cars. His Clemson University National Champions car, that is going to be available for pre-order. Um, really nice looking car. I'm glad to see that this car is um, going to be produced in both scales. I just uh, found that out as well. Um, should be ar arrived in November if it makes it to the pre-order list. And we also got his East Carolina University car. So I uh, do got some more uh, college related cars coming into play. But really cool to see an underfunded car um, that's going to try to be produced. So hopefully we will get this car. Um, in, in the makes for sure but um, all these die casts that you find on the pre-orders guys just head on over to your local die cast dealers uh, die cast page or at line racing or plan and just pre-order those cars and who knows maybe it won't end up into the next list that we're going to be talking about which is the cancellations boy oh boy if i had a uh, nickel for every time i cancel a die cast i think i'd be a millionaire especially in lionel's part but uh we do got five new cancellations to be talking about on this episode guys and the first one up it is going to be you guessed it not an Xfinity car <laughs> all these are cup cars by the way but um, anyways sorry for teaching you guys but here we go the five new canceled die cast start now and we're gonna get into this guys so we got Brad Kozlowski's number two Miller Lite salutes car that is unfortunately canceled in the 124 elites version so the 124 ARC standard version is still available for pre-order and also the 164 so not too much of a big loss but like I said you're gonna lose a lot of detail in this die cast because that's what the elite die casts are um, we also got Casey Kane's number five Mountain Dew card, the card that he drove at the All Star Challenge or the Monster Energy All Star, or whatever they, whatever they call it now. I'm still going to call it the All Star Challenge <laughs> um, because that's how I live on the edge. Um, but yeah, that car is canceled in the 124 ARC version only. So the 164 version is still available. And you know, this can't be a too big loss because if you guys know, most of the Casey King cars that are produced for this year, as I talked about in the Johnson throwback car just um, a couple minutes ago, um, it's gonna be produced on the 124 Gold Series cars, which that means the hood only opens. So you don't get the roof flaps that open or the deck lit. So I like to call that the cheap plastic mold. And you know, in greater terms, uh, if you guys want a better representation about that term, uh, that's basically how I would describe it. But uh, not too much of a big loss. I mean, I know it's going to stink for any Casey Kane fans out there. Um, and especially if you want to collect all the Mount Dew cars. Um, you know, l last year they had all the cars produced uh, for last year with the Decision cars. But this year, looks like it's going to be out of luck for, um, for any uh, Casey Kane and any Dew fans out there. Um, we do got some more salute cars being canceled, guys. Um, these next two are very patriotic, which is very unfortunate. Um, Greg Galdine's number 23 Bubba Burger salutes car. Um, that car is unfortunately canceled in the 124 ARC version as well. Uh, and this car is an undefined car, so it is going to be on the Gold Series mold. But um, it, it is canceled now, so um, the 164 is still available. So that's good right there. Glad we're going to see the 164 being produced. But uh such stinks for any uh, BK Racing fans out there, but like I said with the Case King car, it's, it is going to be on the hood open only car, so maybe that's why it was cancelled. Um, plus it's also an underfunded car as well, so can't be really su too surprised about that, but very unfortunate to see that. Uh, next one up is a pretty big surprise. We got Jimmy Johnson's number 48 Lowe's Patriotic car. Now don't get too worried guys, this car is only cancelled at 124 Elite scale, so as I said with the uh, Miller Lite Salutes car from Brad Kozlowski, it's only available now in the 124 ARC standard version and the 164 version so you're still in luck for any Jimmy Johnson fans out there who really want to show their uh, uh, power pride um, that's an old term that uh, Jimmy Johnson used to use so I decided to use that appropriately for that but um, and last one up guys we got yet another Eric Jones car and it's very unfortunate to see this car getting canceled because I really thought this car was gonna make the MOQ list but it didn't his sport clips Toyota Camry 
has been canceled in the 124 ARC version. Now, this is really bad because the 160 bar version was not offered because of the, you see that little five hour energy logo that's on the corner panel? Yep, that is the reason why we did not get that car produced in uh, the 164 scale. So you can clearly say that both scales are kind of like canceled, but uh, the 164 was never offered, which is so unfortunate. I really wish Lionel would just make a car or just, you know, if, if they're really desperate for an Eric Jones car, just make an Eric Jones 164 with just his name on it. I mean, make it the five hour energy scheme, but just put, you know, Eric Jones branding on as the sponsor like they did with uh breck is also kevin harvick i know that sounds cheap but if we're all really desperate for an eric jones car they should do that because right now we have no eric jones 164 for this year and for 124 collectors out there it's looking even worse as well i mean his serious xm car was canceled as well and um who could only know what's gonna be happening next um uh, we do guys toyota care car that is still available for pre-order but um yeah it really stinks for eric jones and any fans out there but uh hopefully we can uh see some hope in the light um in the next coming episodes so i don't know we'll just see how this goes but that wraps up on your cancellations folks all right everybody and we're going on to our last topic of the show and it is going to be cars 3 related stuff guys and by related stuff i mean diecast so uh if but first we do that guys we're gonna be talking about car 3 the latest summer blockbuster hits that just recently came out from disney pixar as you guys know disney pixar makes a lot of great movies um, like toy story and you know the incredibles and finding nemo and all those great movies that you know we all liked when we were children i'm sure many young adults and many young um uh, young adults and young teens and late teens also probably tuned in to watch this movie um which you know that's pretty quite funny because you know cars 3 came out in 2007 i'm sure a lot of us were pretty young back then when we saw the first original cars but uh cars 3 definitely you know topped off the box shop box office charts for this race weekend um it was released on last friday which was during um, uh, the race weekend for michigan and gateway so that was really good timing to have that especially during the middle of summer because everybody's out now and everybody wants to see some good old nascar racing and watch some cars three so <laughs> um hope you guys like my little uh, southern accent right there but yeah cars three definitely is a really cool movie to check out it's definitely stick to sticks to its roots unlike the second movie um i did saw it the other day i think on tuesday so it was really cool to you know have one of my days off and go check out that movie and see what i had a thought about all the hype from everybody posting it on instagram and all the reviews and all that so good majority of the diecast community did check out this uh video including my uh, it, not video the uh movie god i don't want to talk about now anymore <laughs> um love to get sidetracked you on the diecast news um but yeah cars 3 really is definitely a movie I, i'm not really a movie critic but all i gotta say is, is that I would highly recommend getting this movie a great check if you are a big fan of the original Cars. Cars 2 definitely was not the sequel I didn't want to expect, but Cars 3 is definitely the sequel that this series definitely needed. And I was really glad that they went back to the roots with the racing and all that, and the whole story about Lightning McQueen and Cruz Ramirez, just really inspiring and just shows you to never give up and all that stuff. But not going to say too anything else about that, but a really cool movie to go and check out. But um, we do got some, but Cars 3 was definitely a big inspiration, especially for NASCAR guys. We had some NASCARs that were um, sponsored, that were sponsoring this movie. Um, as I show you guys a picture right here, we got uh, five NASCARs that were sponsoring this movie. And we, we, as you can see right here, we got Clint Boyer, who's driving the Cars 3 car at uh, this race weekend at Sonoma, and then moving over to Bubba Wallace. He drove this uh, Cars 3 uh, Globe Life Ford Mustang at the uh, Dover race for uh, the Xfinity series. And then we also had, um, this was the first cars that was released, the Cars 3 cars, um, which unfortunately we didn't have the Michael McDowell driving the 95. I mean, that would have been amazing. Could you imagine Michael McDowell driving the 95 Rusty's car? Man, that would have been just amazing. But the 37 Chris Buescher car, that was at the, running at the Coca-Cola 600. And then we had Eric Jones's at GameStop, uh, GameStop Toyota Cars 3. Um, that was ran at Pocono, and then of course the Cars 3 car that everyone's looking forward to, the Michigan race winner Kyle Larson. He drove the Cars 3 car in a victory lane, and a lot of people were asking Lionel if they're going to make this car 
um, because you know there's a lot of Kyle Larson fans who will want to get this car produced because they have made the other two Kyle Larson cars like his Michigan car from last year and the uh, Auto Club win from this year so a lot of people wonder if we're gonna get that third Kyle Larson win diecast produced but um, unfortunately Lionel has confirmed on their Twitter and the Lionel Racing Forum for any of those replies that they said um, they have replied back that none, and I repeat, none of those Cars 3 diecasts that I mentioned, including the Larson win, will not be produced due to not acquiring the licensing rights from Disney and Mattel Toys. Now, that's very unfortunate. I mean, uh, that's that's kind of ironic as well because if you guys remember, uh, Disney did produce some cars from Henrik Motorsports back then. I mean, what was it? They made a Plains car, and uh, I think a couple years ago for Jimmy Johnson. And then they also made a Monster University car as well. So that's kind of ironic ironic in my opinion but that was a different team back then but i don't know i guess uh i guess um i guess it's not really disney's fault it has to be mattel because mattel is mattel toys they are you know they're making a lot of bank for cars merchandise i mean uh, you can ask my buddy david land on youtube he's a good friend of mine check out his youtube channel um he collects a lot of cars three stuff and you can mostly find them at walmart toys r us target and including the great Kmart, which is unfortunately going away for many people on us. Uh, David Land's favorite store, by the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mattel Toys, they are making a lot of money off the Cars 3 merchandise, and I don't think they want to share the licensing rights to a diecast company that only does NASCAR diecast. And Mattel Toys is mostly, you know, they're mostly, you know, dedicated to, you know, younger audiences out there, you know, more kid friendly. So, you know, they're, they're making a lot of big butts with uh, Disney and Pixar for all this. So, uh, and I know a lot of people collect the Cars 3 cars, the Cars cars as well. Well, that's ironic. I said that twice, but uh, you know what I mean. But yeah, just very unfortunately that we're going to not see any of these cars produced. Um, the Larson one is definitely a big disappointment, but I'm really disappointed in the Eric Jones car, guys, because that is the first Eric Jones car that we do not see a single 5-hour energy sponsorship. And what do you know, with our luck... <laughs> it's not gonna be made guys so that's just so unfortunate because of that little small car street logo so like I said it's been really bad news for Eric Jones fans out there and a lot of people are asking me on my Instagram account um, for Nesco Nightcast News official Instagram account that a lot of people are wondering if the GameStop cars get produced because like I said the 5 energy car that 5 hour energy logo is not on that car but due to you know cars 3 you know being acquired by disney and mattel um lionel couldn't get the licensing rights for that so that is just so unfortunate right there and just i don't know what to say about that guys uh definitely a big loss right there i, I know nascar has been a big help in the making of this cars 3 uh, movie i mean we had some great superstars like bubba wallace um <clears throat> excuse me by the way that's a verb probably have that out we had bubba wallace ryan blaney chase elliott daniel suarez um, Jeff Gordon, Lewis Hamilton, Daryl Waltrip, lots of cool, you know, race legends and stars that came on board to this movie, which just like the original, so that was really nice to see. But unfortunately, you know, due to Disney and Mattel, you know, doing their own thing and they're making their bucks, unlike Lionel Racing. So th this is, like I said, I'm not going to say too much about this, but it is very unfortunate. It's definitely a missed opportunity. Uh, not only for Lionel, but also for Disney and Mattel. So hopefully Mattel is, doing all the, is loving all the Cars money. But uh, maybe there is some hope, guys. Uh, maybe, but we don't know yet, guys. But uh, there's always custom makers, after all, if you really want to get these die casts. So uh, custom makers, you're, uh, get ready to make some Cars 3 cars because uh, you're going to need it. Good luck, my friends. But other than that, guys, this has been the episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video series. As always, guys, please give this video a good comment, like, if you guys had not already, I highly encourage you guys to subscribe to my channel, Original Big Bright. If you guys want to check out any more NASCAR Diecast News videos, I have a playlist on my channel to go and check that out. Uh, I do got some IndyCar Diecast reviews and NASCAR Diecast reviews as well. And uh, we'll be uploading some more Diecast related videos uh, in the next coming weeks, guys. So stay tuned to that and make sure to hit subscribe and click that bell notification if you guys want to join the notification squad. So just do that real quickly. Shouldn't take you too long already. I'll wait. But um, yeah, that's all I got to say right there. But this is the, this has been the NASCAR IKS News. This is Ridge Big Bry or Brian LeFray Jr. I'm gonna sign off, and you know we're gonna you know hopefully enjoy the rest of this uh, race weekend, guys. So uh, see you guys later.